This is Dr. Pam Popper, Pamela Popper on YouTube discussing whether governors and health departments can issue decrees legally. According to Weld County, Colorado, attorney Bruce Barker, his company, or his county, I'm sorry, does not need to ask permission from the Colorado Department of Health in order to open. He says that the state's public health orders are a series of rules couched as orders which have no legal basis. Thank you, a lawyer actually calling it what it is. Just like our mask mandates here in Ohio, they're not laws. You know, the emperor doesn't get, well, the emperors do get to make laws. See, that's the difference. That's why we don't call him Governor DeWine anymore, because he's an emperor. He just makes up whatever he wants everybody to do. So any That would also apply to California Governor Newsom or any other governor who does such things. Anyway, the rulemaking process, according to this attorney, is long and cumbersome, and it requires the legislature to authorize the new rules and statute. None of that has occurred in the state of Colorado. According to Barker, that was the first red flag for him, supported by the Wisconsin Supreme Court ruling that dismissed orders by that state's governor after the state legislature sued for overstepping his authority. And by the way, going back to the lawsuits I was talking about earlier, Wisconsin, the lawsuit, the Supreme Court ruled to vacate the orders by the governor. The Emperor Pritzker had his wings clipped a little bit when um, the court ruled that everything he did after April 8th was illegal and, and uh, essentially set the state free. Now, the emperor is appealing, of course, because he doesn't want to give up his power. But um, if you can get these lawsuits into court, there are, we haven't had any that were, over, that were not um, uh, decided in favor of the people saying this is unconstitutional. It's knock on wood for that. But, um, and I'm hoping that we'll do that to the emperor. It's so sad that we've come to this point that we have to file lawsuits and they drag on and drag on. <clears throat> and meanwhile, people are suffering. I went to a store yesterday. There's a T-Mobile store in Carpinteria. And there were uh, three young fellows working in there all wearing masks. And I, I went in there not wearing a mask. And uh, because they wanted my business, they made an exception and uh, and yet, here's what I think. If I were a young man, and I'm put myself in their place, to have to bow down and wear a mask, and w spend all day, and of course while you're talking to them, they're fiddling with them, and they're falling down and going up and down, and uh, it is just so sad that we've come to this point. It, following orders, having to live like this, it's so miserable out there. It's so, just an atmosphere of fear. And, uh, and, and then, of course, some people, the people don't, don't want to wear a mask, and the ones that want you to wear a mask, all divided up, angry. Uh, social distancing rules, oh, it's just, it's so oppressive. Well, I'll play a little bit more here. For DeWine sometime very soon, too. So Barker goes on to say, if you go along with the premise that the state health director can issue orders that are rules and then tell you how to live your life and run your business, then that person has the ability to change her mind at any time. You have an unelected official who's creating a crime. And so that's, again, the, the, there are laws. And to change the laws, you have to go through the legislative process unless you basically decide I'm no longer an elected official, and I'm now the emperor of my state, and I've appointed a, um, an assistant emperor called the Department of Health, or the um, public health official, and we make the rules and laws. It doesn't work that way in the United States. Well, it does now, unfortunately. Yep. Not supposed to work that way, but it just, it just happens, and there's not enough people standing up to it. That's, that's how I view it. There's just too much compliance. I understand people want to be cooperative, but at some point you have to push back. Of course, there's a lot of people that probably support these actions, so you'd be running up against them too. Very tough. But little by little, we've got to get ourselves set free from the tyranny.
Yep. And Barker, who has worked as the county attorney in Weld for 37 years, said he addressed the subject with commissioners after the state requested that Weld County apply for a waiver to allow businesses to open ahead of schedule. Weld County got caught in the crosshairs with Governor Paulus and the Colorado Department of Health when it announced a safer at work plan without their blessing. That's what we need. More people just saying, I don't need your permission to do anything. I'm going to do what I want to yep. be a citizen and I have rights. Paulus had threatened to withhold federal emergency COVID-19 funding, but Weld commissioners ignored the threat. They continue to tell business owners in Weld County that they did not close them down and they will not tell them when they can and cannot reopen or at what capacity. Barker said the second red flag was the fact that State Attorney General Phil Weiser's office has not prosecuted a single case under the orders. Additionally, the governor said himself in a press conference that the orders were not enforceable. And by the way, one of the reasons why even the mask orders are generally um, not enforceable or enforced by law enforcement is they not, are not enforceable. Now, what they can do, a store can refuse to let you in and call law enforcement if you won't leave. But in terms of walking around without a mask and stores that will let you in without a mask, and some of them are not being unreasonable and understand that some people need to breathe and have legitimate reasons. I mean, we're getting, we, every day I get emails from people that are passing out from wearing the masks and and the whole nine yards, they just can't. They're asthmatics and, and that sort of thing. So anyway, um, these are not laws, they're orders. There's a big difference, all right? So bottom line, Barker said, is a variance isn't needed because none of the rules were legally created anyway. He told Complete Colorado that businesses could challenge the validity of the orders if they need to defend citations received by police departments that enforce the state public health orders despite the county repeatedly calling them non-existent. The argument would be there was no legal authority for the CD, the Colorado Public Health Department director, to issue the rules through a health order. And, um, and so... Well, that's enough of that. Uh, I just can't believe all this takes so long to happen. Just so, so slow to catch on and realize what's going on and, and to reverse it. 